Hello everyone, I am Harsimrit and I welcome you to our session Recap of Accent Part 2. In the last session Recap of Accent Part 1, we would covered the vowel sounds. Here we will revise the consonant sounds that we have studied in our previous sessions. What are consonants? The word consonant comes from Latin, meaning sounding with or sounding together. There are 24 consonant sounds in English. These are produced by shaping, stopping or blocking the airstream as it passes through the nose or the mouth. A consonant sound can be voiced or voiceless. Voiceless sounds are P, T, K, S, SH, Voiced sounds are sounds like B, D, Z, Z, and G, amongst others. Apart from the fact that a consonant sound can be voiceless or voiced, the place of articulation and the manner of articulation also determines the way we articulate the consonant sound. We'll discuss this very briefly as we go along with our target sounds. Our target sounds are the T and D sounds, P and B sounds, S and SH sounds, V and W sounds, Z, J and J sounds, and finally R and L sounds. We've covered these in our previous sessions on accent. Now we'll just revise them. Make sure that we have them right. Let's begin with our first set of sounds, the T and D sounds. The T sound is a voiceless alveolar plosive. It is voiceless because it's a light sound. You can put your fingers on your vocal cords and feel the sound T. It is alveolar because in this sound, the tip of the tongue comes to the teeth ridge, t. And it is a plosive because the breath comes out of the mouth with some explosive noise. The d sound in contrast is a voiced alveolar plosive. Words with the t sound. repeat these words after me total not total total astonish astonish adamant adamant deduct deduct good words with the d sound Drown, drown, dependent, dependent, reduce, reduce, daddy, daddy. I must uh, emphasize on the importance of practicing these sounds because in our state, we tend to articulate these sounds in a very harsh manner. You know, we tend to say something like daddy. It would be a soft daddy. So we need to soften our ters and ters. Now let's move on to a little activity. In this exercise, we have to fill in the blanks with the correct homonym with ter or der sound. The exercise is, of course, given in your workbooks. I'd like you to take out your workbooks, open them to the right page, be ready with your pens. Let us begin the exercise. Everyone dash Mary is going to the party. The options are accept or accept. Everyone dash Mary is going to the party. Accept or accept. 
the correct answer would be accept accept means to receive accept means to exclude therefore everyone except mary is going to the party next they offer many flavors dash vanilla they offer many flavors dash vanilla the options are beside and besides the correct answer would be besides because beside is a preposition that means next to but besides means in addition to or other than in this case we can imagine an ice cream stall with many flavors not just vanilla they offer many flavors besides vanilla next after dinner we will have dash the options are desert and dessert after dinner we will have dash desert or dessert well desert refers to a barren place the registan however dessert is the swedish so what would you like to have after dinner yes after dinner we will have dessert next let us dash with this session the options are proceed and proceed let us dash with this session proceed or proceed to proceed is to go ahead of to proceed is to go forward so let us move on with the session the correct answer is proceed next we were dash for the results your options are all ready and already now all ready means completely prepared but already means before the time specified i'm sure you've been able to do do this right we were all ready for the results next the students were dash during the long lecture the options are bored spelt b o r e d and bored spelt b o a r d the students were dash during the long lecture which bored would it be bored spelt b o r e d is what my trainees never feel and b o a r d is the teaching aid i use and you can see it behind me a white board therefore the students were b o r e d during the long lecture next the dock had facilities to dash grain directly into the vessel the dock had facilities to dash grain directly into the vessel your options are c h u t e and s h o o t so here we are loading grain into a ship what would we do c h u t e is an inclined channel tube or shaft for conveying something s h o o t means to pick up a gun and to fire a bullet so the right answer would be yes c h u t e now let's move on to our next target sounds the p and b sounds the p sound is a voiceless bilabial plosive it's a light sound in this sound we bring both the lips together and throw the air out of the mouth let's take up a few words with the sound paper paper pollution pollution optimist optimist couple c 
couple. The next sound, the burr sound, is similar to purr except that it is a voiced sound. So it's a voiced bilabial plosive. Please repeat the words after me. Baboon. Baboon. Incredible. Incredible. Bubble. Bubble. And please, we don't repeat the sound with a double letter. It would not be bubble. It will be bubble. Shabby. Shabby. Good. Now we have an exercise for you where you have to match the columns with per and burr sound words. I'll read out the statements in column A first, followed by the words in column B, and then you have to get to work. Column A. The person who makes our furniture. The person who makes our furniture. Next, the place where there are many books to read. The place where there are many books to read. Next, the place where one goes to worship. The place where one goes to worship. Next, the person who cuts your hair. The person who cuts your hair. Next, the person who carries luggage. The person who carries luggage. And the last one, where cakes are made. Where cakes are made. Now let's look at the words in column B. Temple. Temple. Porter, porter, carpenter, carpenter, library, library, barber, barber, bakery, bakery. Now please match the columns and we'll discuss the solutions. I know you've been able to do this exercise. It's so easy. The person who makes our furniture, carpenter. The place where there are books to read, library. A place where one goes to worship, temple. A person who cuts your hair, barber. A person who carries luggage, porter. And where cakes are made, bakery. Good to see that you've got all the answers right. Now let's move on to another pair of sounds, the sir and sher sounds. We have covered the sir and the sher sounds in us in our previous sessions. I hope you've been working on these sounds in case you did have a problem with the sir and the sher. Both sounds should be clear and they should not be mixed up. Sir is a voiceless alveolar fricative. It's a light sound. It is made when the tip of the tongue comes near the teeth ridge and it's a fricative or a continuous sound. Sh is a voiceless palatoalveolar fricative. The tongue actually bends in the sh. Please repeat after me. S. Sh. And feel the difference in the sounds. Now let's practice certain words with a sir sound. Silent. Associate. Associate. Request. Request. Crest. Crest. And let's take up some words with a sure sound. Action. Action, recession, recession, 
shallow, shallow, brash, brash. I know someone who tends to say accent. So what would I say to that person? I tell him, please pronounce the sh properly and say action. Now let's moving on. We have an interesting activity for you. It's a story, the princess and the pea. I would like you to listen to the story and identify all the words with the sir sound and the sh sound in them. Once upon a time, there was a prince who wanted to marry a princess. But she would have to be a real princess. He travelled all over the world to find one. But nowhere could he get what he wanted. There were many princesses, but it was difficult to find out whether they were real ones. One evening, a terrible storm came on. There was thunder and lightning and the rain poured down in torrents. Shortly, a knocking was heard at the city gate. It was a princess standing out there in front of the gate. But good gracious, what a sight! The rain and the wind had made her look shabby. The water ran down her hair and clothes. It ran down into the toes of her shoes and out again at the heels. And yet she said that she was a real princess. Well, we'll soon find that out, thought the old queen. But she said nothing, went into the bedroom, took all the bedding of the bedstead and laid a pea on the bottom. Then she took 20 mattresses and 20 sheets and laid them on the pea. On this, the princess had to lie all night. In the morning, she was asked how she had slept. Oh, very badly, said she. I have scarcely closed my eyes all night. Heaven only knows what was in the bed. But I was lying patiently on something hard so that I am black and blue all over my body. It is horrible. Now they knew that she was a real princess because she had felt the pee right through the 20 mattresses and 20 sheets. Nobody but a real princess could be as sensitive as that. So the prince took her for his wife. Did you listen to that fairy tale carefully? It's a very famous tale, The Princess and the Pea. And I hope you were busy underlining the words with the sir and the sure sounds. Some of the words with the sir sounds are once, prince, princess, storm, torrents, city, standing, sight, said, soon, bedstead, mattresses, scarcely, something, sensitive. And some of the words with the sure sounds, I'm sure you've been able to find them, she, shortly, Gracious, shabby, shoes, sheets, patiently, so could you find all those words and have you been able to identify all of them? Good. Now, it may be a good idea for you to list out those words and practice speaking them as well. You could do that in your own time. Now, let's move on to the next pair of sounds that we've studied earlier in our course. It is the V and the W sounds. We have 
learned a lot about these sounds. We know that although these sound similar to Indians, they are actually two distinct sounds. The V sound is a voiced labiodental fricative. It's a heavy sound. It is made by the lower lip coming up to the upper front teeth. And it's a continuous sound. The W sound or the W is very different. It's a voiced bilabial approximant or semivowel. In this sound, both the lips come close together and then the lower lip moves away. And uh, there's no complete closure in the mouth. So it's a semivowel or an approximant. Let's practice a few words with these sounds. The V sound first. Please repeat, enunciate the sound with me. V. V. Good. Visual. Visual. Variety. Variety. Carnivore. Carnivore. Volve. Volve. The friction in this sound should be audible. Once more, please. Visual. Variety. Carnivore. Volve. Now let's move on to the W sound. W sound. Warranty. Warranty. Water. Water. Weave. Weave. Question. Question. Now that's a tricky one. Although the word starts with a Q, there is no sound called Q. It is the sound of K followed by W. Question. Once more please. Warranty. Water. Weave. Question. Good. I like your effort. Now this is a fill in the blanks activity. First, I'd like you to practice certain words with me. All these words have the V and the W sounds. Then I would like you to attempt the exercise using these words. Please repeat after me. Bite your lip. Vermont. Vermont. Weasels. Weasels. Weather. Weather. Vehicle. Vehicle. Windmill. Windmill. Vegetables. Vegetables. Vertebra. Vertebra. Washington. Washington, wasp, wasp, vase, vase. Now let's take a look at the exercise in which you have to fill in the blanks with the words we've just practiced. The first statement, a dash is a holder for flowers. A dash is a holder for flowers. Do you have the right answer? Yes, it would be vase. Next, George Dash was a revolutionary war hero and the first president of the United States. Dash was a revolutionary war hero and the first president of the United States. We know this famous man, George Washington. Next, a dash is a flying, stinging insect. A dash is a flying, stinging insect. Yes, the answer would be wasp. Next, a dash is one of the series of small connected bones in the spine that surround and protect the spinal cord. 
A dash is one of the series of small connected bones in the spine that surround and protect the spinal cord. I am sure the science students would know about it at once. The others may have to think. It is the vertebra. Next, dash are small furry mammals with short legs. Dash are small furry mammals with short legs. And the answer is weasels. Next, a dash is a device that points the way the wind is blowing. A dash is a device that points the way the wind is blowing. I have seen these on the top of farmhouses all over Punjab. The answer would be weather vane. Next, a dash moves people and things from one place to another. A dash moves people and things from one place to another. That's a simple one. The answer is vehicle. Vehicle. Next, dash is a state in northeastern America. Dash is a state in northeastern America. The answer would be Vermont. Next, a dash uses the wind to generate power. A dash uses the wind to generate power. Yes, the correct answer is windmill. And the last one, dash are edible plants like spinach, carrot, onions and brinjal. Dash are edible plants like spinach, carrots, onions and brinjal. Very easy. The answer is vegetables. Please remember it, you know, it shouldn't sound like you're saying table. It's vegetable. Good. Now let's move on to a very important set of sounds. I know we've told you over and over again that you need to pay special attention to these sounds. We tend to have very harsh MTI here. These sounds are the Z, Z and J sounds. The Z sound is a voiced alveolar fricative. You'll notice that it's a continuous sound and it's made when the tip of the tongue comes to the teeth ridge. Please say it with me. Z. And what is the Z sound? In this sound, it's a continuous sound like the Z, but the tongue bends. So it becomes a palato alveolar fricative. And of course, it is voiced. The J sound is a little different. It is a voiced sound. It is also a palato alveolar sound. However, it's an affricate. It's a sudden sound, not a continuous sound like the Z and the Z. So that's just revision for you. What's more important is to practice these sounds. Let us start off with the Z. Z. Zodiac. Zodiac. Zenith. Zenith, zipper, zipper, zigzag, zigzag. Words with a zh sound. Version, version, excursion, excursion, genre, genre. Luxury. Luxury. If you still find it hard to enunciate the sound, carry on trying. You'll get it. Words with a J sound. Badge. Detergent. Luggage. Jockey. Once more. Badge. Detergent. 
luggage jockey now we have an activity for you based on idioms it is a match the columns activity i'll read out column a first followed by column b i'll give you a minute to match the columns and then we'll come up with idioms in all the idioms you'll find one of the target sounds so let's look at column a as busy as a to get on ones jump to keeping my fingers rings a take it who don't joke with don't be a column b and why don't you repeat these words with me stranger cares me easy crossed bell nerves b conclusions now please take a minute to match the columns i'm sure you've managed to attempt the exercise and now we have a series of idioms these are the answers as busy as a bee that means to be very busy to have no time at all for anything else next to get on one's nerves the z sound is used in nerves next jump to conclusions that means just to assume something without really thinking next keeping my fingers crossed i do this when i'm really hoping for something next rings a bell it gives me an idea next take it easy that means relax next who cares next don't joke with me and the last one don't be a stranger so interesting idioms here and in all of them you would notice words with the target sounds j z and j we must make sure that these words are correctly pronounced and our last pair of consonant sounds in the session today is the r and l sounds let's look at a few words with a r sound and please remember to practice them with me reason reason burden burden crunch crunch customer customer i would like you to concentrate on this last word most people tend to say customer now we won't kill the customer customer good a few words with the l sound little little not the typical accent we tend to apply when we say little it's a soft t little belt belt final final climate climate good Now let's move on to an activity with the r and the l sounds. I would like you to listen to a conversation. It's called making an appointment with your professor and do listen carefully because right after the conversation we have some questions for you. <music> professor, could I make an appointment with you? I'm free tomorrow afternoon between 2 and 4. Do you have a particular time in mind? 2 o'clock would be the best time. Fine. Do you know where my office is? Uh no, I'm not sure. Remember, it is in the L building 
on the third floor. I see. Don't worry, it will work out fine once you get there. I'll see you then. I'll see you then. Looking forward to meeting you. I hope you listen to that conversation carefully because like I promised, now I've got questions for you. The first question, why does the student call the professor? The student calls the professor to make an appointment. That was an easy one. Next question. What would be the best time for the professor? I'll repeat that for you. What would be the best time for the professor? I'm, I know you've got that right. The best time for the professor would be between 2 and 4. Next. What is the address of the building? What is the address of the building? Correct. The address is the L building on the third floor. And the last question. At what time does the student want to meet the professor? At what time does the student want to meet the professor? Simple answer to that. The student wants to meet the professor at 2 o'clock. So that was rather an easy exercise for you. I know you've managed to get all these answers. And with that, we come to the end of the session. Today, in recap of Accent 2, we have discussed our target consonant sounds. These sounds are really very, very important in the sense that they play quite a major role when we try to neutralize our MTI and speak in a neutral accent. So I would request you to go back home, open your workbooks and practice the words we have discussed today over and over again. Get your friends to help you, do it in groups if you want. With that, we come to the end of the session. Until we meet again in some other session, goodbye.